Hi guys, Alec Pierce. Tech tips from, uh, here we are, we're at Simcoe Diving. Now Simcoe Diving is pretty, is pretty appropriate for this particular topic, uh, dive sites that we don't use anymore because there's a couple of dive sites right here on Lake Simcoe, close to Simcoe Diving. Lake Simcoe Diving is the premier dive store uh, on, on Lake Simcoe. And there's lots of wrecks there, lots of dive sites. A couple of spots that you can't dive anymore, let me explain. Uh, uh, for a variety of reasons, which I will share with you, uh, dive sites, popular dive sites that have, a, uh, have some real appeal to scuba divers are no longer available. Now these were dive sites in most cases that were extremely popular. By popular I mean uh, it was always best to go diving there through the week. Because sometimes if you went on weekends you had difficulty. You had difficulty finding a parking spot and you had difficulty getting in and out because there were a lot of divers there. Uh, some of these dive sites were comfortable with a dozen divers, but you could show up on a, on a Saturday or a Sunday morning at, at 10 o'clock and there'd, there'd be 50 divers there. Very, very popular. They were popular for a lot of reasons. Most of them are relatively close to Toronto. And Toronto was the um, largest uh, center for uh, scuba diver training in, in Canada, uh, and certainly in Ontario. And, and it was always nice to have dive sites that the dive stores could take their students to, uh, whether for training or for their open water dives, uh, and that was relatively close, an hour to an hour and a half away. And most of the dive sites I'm going to mention to you are, in fact, they, they fit that criteria. They're clear, they have interesting things to look at, um, and, and they're an hour to an hour and a half from Toronto. What are those dive sites? Well, let me, let me tell you about, about a couple. There's, there's one called Big Bay Point. Big Bay Point is on Lake Simcoe, not too far from here. Now, here in Lake Simcoe, we dive commonly in what's called Kempenfelt Bay. And Kempenfelt Bay is a good dive site, uh, shallow, clear. There's a very well-known shipwreck, the J.C. Morrison, an old steam side wheeler. Yeah, like a, like a Mississippi, uh, if you picture a Mississippi, a, a steam boat. A big side wheeler. Yeah, we had them here too. And uh, it's laying on the bottom there. And it's a very, very, very popular. Also a good spot for seeing fish. There's always a lot of fish around the wreck and so on. Very popular spot. And, and that particular uh, dive site, which is still available, right, right on uh, Kempenfeld Bay, right in the middle of the town of uh, Barry, the city of Barry. Oops. Uh, <laughs> um, there's lots of room. Yeah, there's lots and lots of source spaces, probably several hundred yards of, 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 of grass and, and area there where you can get in and out. So that's a popular dive site today. Big Bay Point is not far from Kempenfeld Bay. And Big Bay Point was a very popular dive site as well. At Big Bay Point, they had a very, very large government dock, probably 30 feet wide, maybe 100 feet long, sticking out into the lake. So a lot of divers could go there. We would go there for our training purposes. We would go there for special events, pumpkin carving contests. Have you ever done that? <laughs> That's a hoot. And, and ice diving and uh, treasure dives. We had a lot of fun at Big Bay Point. Uh, but uh, no more. There's no more diving at Big Bay Point. I'll explain why in just a minute. Another example of a, of a dive site that's not commonly used anymore is uh, Burley Falls. Now north, that's a little bit farther north. That's a couple hours up Highway 11 to Burley Falls. It was a very, very popular dive. So lots of, and maybe some still do, but not very many. It wasn't uncommon like Big Bay Point and Burley Falls and Kirkfield Quarry, the half a dozen of these dive sites. On a typical weekend, the dive stores would have all their divers going there for club dive, to training, whatever, and that's where they would go. Some of the other big dive sites that are popular today weren't very popular, weren't really known very well, and they didn't have facilities. These are little dive sites, if you want to call them that, were very popular. Uh, what other ones did we talk about earlier, Kevin? That were particularly good. Kirkview Quarry, I've already mentioned, really, really a nice dive site. Uh, and it, it is a big old quarry, and, uh, and it actually had a train that went down in open pit quarry, train and went down into the quarry. I don't know if you know, I have a video, uh, Kevin, of that train coming out of the quarry there. And a big area, beach area, and a nice area for parking, and there's a boat hanging down, down in there, and there's an airplane. Yeah, we put it there, myself and another fellow actually put an old airplane down there simply as an attraction for divers, because lots of divers went there. Can't dive there anymore. Uh, what else did I have? I can't remember all these ones. Uh, Burley Falls, the Juno, yeah. <clears throat> The Juno was a, uh, <coughs> pardon me, was a very popular dive site. The Juno is the name of a shipwreck 
which is located just offshore. Like I don't think it's I don't think it's a hundred feet off the shore in Lake Ontario, over by Bowmanville. Very popular dive site, and divers still go there occasionally today, but not the way they used to. Uh, they, and a lot of divers go the French River. Now the French River also is a couple hours north, and again, really popular. We used to go up, and we would camp, uh, camp, literally camp, tents, uh, in, in 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 the provincial park close by Grundy Lake. We call it Grungy Lake, but in Grundy Lake Provincial Park, which is just a short distance from the French River, and unlike Grungy Lake, <laughs> uh, the French River was crystal clear. It's a major waterway that, that was used by, by the native peoples and by the Curie de Bois, the early settlers and explorers, and they came through there. And lots of waterfalls, lots of neat stuff there. I have personally have found many things there, rosaries and, and musket balls and so on, on the French River, like the Great Spot, and very few people dive there anymore. One of, the, uh, one of the classic examples of a dive site like that is Fenland Falls. Fenland Falls was a very, very popular soap, and it's a very small town. I don't think Fenland Falls has 15,000 people today. Back then in the 60s and 70s, it might have had five, six, seven thousand 7,000 people. Very small, little, summer only. There were no snowmobiles, really. There was nothing in the wintertime to do. Uh, but in the summertime, boy, on weekends, it was crazy. There was a great big ice cream shop there. It made Baskin Robbins look, 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 look pretty small. You could get anything in the summertime, and there were boaters, and there were fishermen, and, and they didn't have kite sailors back then, but there were water skiers. Oh, it was a great spot. And divers, lots and lots of divers. In fact, that little wee town, which is nowhere near any major center, had its own dive store with a compressor and equipment and everything else, simply there, only open in the summertime, to service all the divers that went to Fenland Falls. Today, very, very few go to Fenland Falls. I'm going to talk about that one just for a moment. And Kevin's got some pictures. Fenland Falls is, is a fa was a favorite of mine. Simple. It was exactly 13 miles from my hometown of Lindsay. I could get there easily. For many years, in the early 60s, when I went there, my mom would, my mom would, my mommy, <laughs> my mom would drive me to Fenland Falls. Yeah, I didn't have a driver's license. And it was kind of neat because I would get my scuba gear on. We didn't have any dive buddies. There were no dive buddies. I mean, I, I knew two other divers, but they lived in Peterborough two hours away. They were, you know, and I was just a kid. I'd taken the course at the YMCA, learned how to scuba dive, and I had some used gear I bought from my postman. I know you're not going to believe this story, but every word is absolutely true. I can give you names and dates. And, uh, and, and then on, on, uh, usually on weekends, I would, uh, my mom would drive me to Fenland Falls. Yeah, I'd get my gear and I'd go scuba diving. Oh, it was neat. All the kids around, you know, the young kids. I, I was uh, 13, 14 years old, <laughs> not exactly old. And I had my knife, you know, a big knife strap. I'd, Kevin, that's a picture, actually. And I'd be on the dock putting my gear on. And the little kids, you know, the five, six, seven, eight, and they'd come over and stare at me. Are you a frog man, mister? And, oh, yeah, 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 I'm a frog man. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> like Mike, a lot like Mike. Mike Nelson <laughs> from Sea Hunt. Of course, he was my hero. So I was a frog man, like Mike, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty exciting for a kid 12, 13, 14 years old. I drove there a lot. And mom would drive me, and she would put a garden chair on, on, by the edge of the dock and sit down, and she would knit. Yeah, and I had a, I had a little orange float. You can see it in the picture that Kevin's going to post. A little orange float. And I would say to my mom, okay, mom, if, yeah, I'm going to pull this off if I have a problem. I'm going to pull this off. If you see that orange float pop to the surface, you call the police. That was a little bit of a joke because at that time, the police didn't have any divers. If the police needed to search for something underwater, guess what? They called the under, they called the dive club, my dive club. And then a couple of our divers would go out and they would help them, you know, a couple of days later. Uh, so it was a bit of a joke. Fortunately, I never had any problems, and and uh, and my mom was fantastic. And then later, I got my driver's license, and I would uh, I would put on my wetsuit, and a jacket over it, and a pair of jeans. I put my tank on my back. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Get on my motorcycle, and I would drive to Phantom Falls. My bike was pretty quick. It took me ten minutes to get to Phantom Falls. My scuba tank on my back. I mean, think about that. Didn't have a helmet. But I had my tank. Anyway, it was pretty funny. Thinking back, great spot to go diving. Now, the reason I mention all this is because I think it's important for divers to realize why sometimes dive sites are lost. Generally, not, not the only reason, but generally, the main reason why dive sites are lost is because of divers. That's right. And almost every one of the, of the names that I've shared with you today, that is the reason. The divers simply were not well behaved. They were noisy. In some cases, they were drunk. 
In some cases, they parked on people's properties where they should not have. In some cases, they were rude to the people who, who lived in that area, right close to the dive, used up all their parking spaces. Sometimes they left litter around. Basically, they were not well behaved. And, uh, and so what happened is over a period of time, people just got fed up and they would go to the local municipality, make a complaint, and a bylaw would be passed. You cannot dive at Big Bay Point. Simple. You can't. Bylaw. You can't park at Big Bay Point anymore because the divers would fill the parking area up, make a mess, and then leave, and people would complain. So there's no parking within a quarter of a mile of where we used to dive at Big Bay Point. So that's one example. Uh, there are other reasons. Kirkfield Quarry, a fun spot. Somebody bought the quarry and the land around it, and they're going to put a subdivision in there. They're working on it. It's going to take a while. But in, in, in the process of all that happening, they determined that scuba divers should no longer be allowed in. A bit of liability and a little bit, nah, they're a nuisance. We don't need them. So divers are now prohibited from uh, Kirkfield Quarry. And that same kind of scenario applies in many things. A little bit of that applies in Fenland Falls. Unfortunately, in Fenland Falls, one of the most popular dive areas in the province, uh, also suffered from inconsiderate divers. Let's just call them inconsiderate divers. They didn't realize at the time. They were just probably having a good time, but uh, they weren't thinking about the other people around them. And so Fenland Falls, to some extent, has, has uh, turned off from divers, and they don't want divers. The people around there are just not interested. There are no laws against it, but it just is not as welcoming, welcoming as it used to be. What's at Fenden Falls? Well, it was kind of neat because the water was clear. Now, the water is also tea-colored. It's clear water, but it has dye in it. And that's a pretty common example in freshwater lakes. So if you're at the surface and you scoop up a little bit of water, it's pretty clean, it's pretty good, you know? But if you go down 20, 25 feet, it gets black. Pitch black. Why? Well, because the light, the sunlight cannot get through. If you take a light down and it's pitch black, but you put your light on, you can see just fine. Because the water is essentially pretty clear, it's just the sunlight doesn't get through. There's a little example here, a very good friend of, of mine, Mark, a young guy, <laughs> and he's just crazy about diving. I think he dies every day of the year, as I used to a hundred years ago, and he's just crazy about diving. And, and a while ago, he asked me about a good spot to dive, and I mentioned Fenlon Falls, and he went to Fenlon Falls following my directions and found something pretty interesting. He found the train, the train wreck at Fenlon Falls. Now, don't go crazy, okay? When, when years ago, when they talked about the train wreck at Fenlon Falls, and Kevin is showing you some pictures right now of, of Mark and some of his friends, and some really good video of the train wreck. We never had video like this. A lot, a lot of people, when they heard about the train wreck at Fenlon Falls, they pictured a great big steam engine, you know, choo-choo, woo-woo, having it sitting on the bottom of the channel. Now, I'm sorry. There's a couple of flat cars that sank they were wooden, most of the wood is gone, but the steel wheels and the bogey wheels are still there. And you can make them out, you can see the video right now. And then you can make them out, you can see the couplings and so on. But it's still pretty exciting. You can also see, this, this dive is at about 50 feet. Not terribly deep, but you can also see it's very, very dark. Notice that when the light is not hitting the wreck, it's dark. Well, that's what I mean by dark water. But you can also see when the light is hitting the wreck, it's actually quite clear. That's what it's like diving in Fenton Falls. It was a great area for training. Because, boy, if you could dive in that water, you could dive anywhere. And it was exciting. And it was close, easy to get to. So those were the advantages or the features or the attractions of some of those local dive sites. Unfortunately, as I've said, most of those dive sites, the ones, the ones I've named, including Fenton Falls to a large extent, are no longer available for diving. And that's a shame. It's all the same reasons that we used to dive on those spots 50 years ago still apply today. But most divers, they uh, head to uh, some of the great shipwreck areas in Tobermory, Lake Ontario, Kingston, Cornwall, all those areas. And I think that's wonderful. They're, they're great dive sites. But boy, I reminisce of all the wonderful times we had at some of those lost dive sites. Maybe you had some experiences like this. Maybe you know some spots as well that used to be a good dive sites and uh, no longer available or nobody goes to anymore. Hey, it might be fun. Maybe it's fun. Get a couple of divers and say, come on, let's go back to good old Fenton Falls or whatever it happens to be and see what it's like. Anyway, I thought I'd share that with you in some of those great videos from my friend uh, Mark, a young, enthusiastic diver. I'm a little bit envious, actually. I remember what it was like, and it was great to see those videos. So thanks to you, Mark. 
And thanks to you guys for listening to me and uh, stirring up some of those old memories. Okay, that's it. Enough reminiscing. Alec Pierce, Tech Tips, Scuba Tech Tips here at Simcoe Diving. Talk to you soon.